Hey everybody, good afternoon. I hope you're well. I'm doing okay. Some of the paper towels that are moving by themselves. They're not really moving by themselves. They're moving because I have a fan on here in the kitchen. It's warm. I didn't leave the air conditioner on during the day, so I came home to a hot apartment. Anyways, I'm going to make myself a quick and easy supper, and I figured I would do it with you and I also have a little story to tell you. So first let me show you what I'm going to make for supper tonight. I stopped and I got a rotisserie chicken. I haven't bought one of these in a while. I like to buy them, you know, have one meal out of it and then pick at it for a few days, you know, little snacks or sandwiches. So I got the rotisserie chicken. I had here at home a can of home, uh, home style, uh, home style chicken gravy. I have something I haven't used before. This is whole grain brown rice, and you cook it in the microwave for 90 seconds. Never bought this before, so this is the first time for everything. We're going to do that today. And I have a can of sweet peas. I like um, canned peas. I like canned anything. I do like frozen, and I like fresh too, but this is what we're going to have today for vegetable sweet peas. And while I prepare this, I'm going to tell you a little story. A little story about something that I did yesterday. Very uncharacteristic of me, and it goes against anything I say about frugal living and saving money. But first, let me start prepping this, and then I'll get to talking. So, I'm going to turn you down a little bit so you can see. Whoop, sorry for the shake. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open... Hello, I'm going to open the can of gravy and put it in the pan. I turn it down a little bit, probably to about six. I'm going to use a regular little spoon there. Put that in the pan. All right. And then I'm going to just start cutting up. You can see that, right? And you can see me too. Look at that, I put the camera up there a little higher today. So what I'm gonna do is take the chicken out of the bag. Usually the rotisserie chickens that I buy come in like a, um, like a black tray with almost like a dome cover over it, but they didn't have them this time. Maybe they're trying to save on plastic. So this is a little harder to get out of um, the bag. I'm gonna get a paper plate, hold on, right in this cabinet. Ta-da, paper plate, okay. So, let's see. Take this up with a fork if I can. Whoop. Yeah, all right, so there's the rotisserie chicken. And I'm just gonna start cutting some of this off and just put it right in the pan with the gravy. All right. So once I get this all going, I will tell you my little story. All right. So there's that. Slice a little more up. I think the best part of a, oh, this chicken over there in the corner, the best part of this is the crispy skin. What do you think? You like that crispy skin? I definitely do. So I'm just going to keep pulling this apart and put it in the gravy. I will be able to, like I said, have a meal tonight and then I will take it all off the bone and make, I don't know, a chicken salad or something. But I am just destroying this right now, pulling it apart. I'm also finding that these rotisserie chickens aren't nearly as big as they were a few years ago. What do you folks think? Are you finding that? Yeah, all right. We'll do that, okay. So I'm just gonna put this over here a little bit. And we get our little wooden spoon and start stirring that up a little. All right, 
So there's some chicken and gravy in the pan. Now, turn that down low because this is already, the chicken's already cooked. So it's really just heating up the gravy. So I'll put that on low. And now I'm going to open the canned peas. I don't have an electric can opener. I have the hand can opener. Just as good and good exercise for your hand and you're not using electricity. All right. out of there. I will drain these. And I'm just going to put the peas in a pan. Put that on the back burner. Literally on the back burner. We'll put that on low. Stir this up a little bit. Then I'm going to put this in the microwave for 90 seconds, like it says. Kneel down a little bit. It says squeeze pouch to separate rice. All right, so we're going to squeeze this pouch to separate the rice. And then it says tear two inches to vent. And it has a little picture of how you're supposed to do that. So. Tear two inches. That was about two inches. And then it says heat on high for 90 seconds. So excuse me while I put this in the microwave. No, 90 second rice. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. But all right, there's the chicken in the gravy. Let's stir up these peas a little bit. And I'm going to come up here a little bit and start telling you the story that I want to tell you. That's going to go off in a second. <coughs> so most of you know that I have a 20-year-old car, and I love that car like anything. It's been the best car I've ever had. It's a 20-year-old Pontiac Vibe. It's almost 21, year, 21 years old. The fan's blowing my hair. Um, so my car is very well maintained, and it has... A little over 227,000 miles on it now. And I got to thinking, they don't make Pontiac Vibes anymore. They don't make them. What am I going to do when my car doesn't work anymore? What am I going to do? Hold on, this should have been done by now. No, two seconds. Excuse me. Rice is done. All right, so anyways, back to the car. This is almost cooked already. What is this, five minute meal? Um, back to the car. I got to thinking, what am I gonna do? I don't ever want another car that's not a Pontiac vibe. I love my car so much, it's not gonna run forever. I need to start finding a backup Pontiac vibe for when this car doesn't run anymore. So I said, okay, let me start looking. And I looked online and there was all kinds. I looked on Facebook Marketplace, looked at different dealerships. There were all kinds of Pontiac Vibes, some really high mileage, some um, older than mine, like a 2002 or 2003. Some were, um, what, newer? but with high, higher mileage, some were newer with lower my, mileage, long story short. Mine cars are 2004, like I said, I found a 2007 Pontiac Vibe with 89,000 miles on it. 
So I contacted the dealer, I'm shaking these peas here, I contacted the dealership and I told them, you know, that I wanted to come look at it. And they wanted $6,000 for this car. So I did. I went and I looked at it and I knew that I didn't want to finance this car. I was going to use money out of my savings to purchase this vehicle. So I went, I went and I looked at the, the car and I brought my car with me and I explained to them that I have a Pontiac vibe and it's getting old. Same story that I just told you. And um, so I test drove this other Pontiac vibe, the new one or the newer one. And it was beautiful. It ran really good. Mine runs really good. Um, there was a couple things that I didn't really like about it, probably because it was newer than mine and the, the look of it changes. So I was talking to the guy and I told him, you know, I did my homework. I looked at the Kelly Blue Book value. It's um, valued under what they were asking. They were asking like $6,999. Well, I also told him that I know Pontiac Vibes. I've been driving one for 20 years. And I know a good one when I see it, this, that, and the other. We looked at the engine. I looked it over. And usually, used car dealers are... I don't want to say crooks. I don't really want to badmouth them, but sometimes they'll see you coming. And I told them my whole story. When my car's not, you know, able to be driven anymore, whatever, what am I going to do? I want a Pontiac Vibe. I didn't go in all neurotic like that, but it did break down to him that I was going to have both cars. I was going to drive both of them. Okay, Robin, <laughs> whatever. He looked at my car and he said, Honestly, your car is going to get probably another 100,000 miles out of it. He says, these Pontiac Vibes, you can't break them. Pontiac Vibes have Toyota engines. It's like a Toyota Matrix engine or even a, or a Toyota Corolla engine. And if you pop my hood, it says genuine Toyota parts. That's why these cars don't die. I've never really had a big mechanical problem with my car. I've fixed little things here and there. He said to me, I want you to go home and I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. And he also told me that he was not budging on the price. So I said, okay. He said, you know what? You'll know later whether or not you want both these cars. You'll know whether or not you're going to drive one car half the week, whatever. You'll know if you really want to do this. Then I got to thinking, can I afford to have two cars on the road? I said to myself, yes, I can. Um, yeah. Again, I, was, I wasn't going to finance it. I didn't want a car payment. I was going to take money out of my savings. Which, if any of you told me you were going to do that, to have two cars, I'd be like, no, you leave your money in the bank. Long story short, I got in my car my car that I have, the 20 year old with 227,000 plus miles. And I started driving down the street to go home and I started crying. I felt like I was betraying my car. I was silly. And then I got to thinking, Robert, what are you doing? This man is straight out telling you, which is something a used car dealer usually won't say is, I'm not selling you this car. There's nothing wrong with yours. For him to tell me, your car is going to last you so much longer. So yeah, that's my little story. I was on a whim going to take $6,000 out of my bank and go buy another car just because I'm afraid of not ever having another Pontiac Vibe. That's silly. Again, that goes against any frugal money-saving tip I would have told any of you. What's wrong with me? I don't know. Sensi sentimental? loyal to my car, love my car, can't imagine life without it. Whoa, I was just having a little moment the past couple days thinking, what am I going to do when my car is no longer? There will be another car, Robin. Whether it's a Pontiac vibe or not, there will be another car. So that's my little story. And I'm sure you tuned in to this video or clicked on the thumbnail because you wanted to see what I was making for supper, right? Yes. All right. 
Thank you for listening to that story. I'm done with the crazy. I'm done thinking that I need to withdraw money out of my bank to go get a second cut. No, Robin. All right, so what I'm going to do is we're going to take this microwave rice out and see what it looks like. Let's see, here's a bowl. All right. Again, I've never used this rice before, so I'm going to cut it the rest of the way. Actually, I'm not going to cut it, I'm just going to rip it. I'm going to pour it into the bowl. Yeah. Here it is. This is the microwave rice, the 90 second microwave rice. You know what I want to put on this a little bit? A little bit of butter. So let me skip over to the refrigerator. Ta da! Here's the butter. All right. Put some butter in that rice. So there is the butter and rice. There's that. I'm a mess. All right, so then we get the peas and we have the chicken and gravy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plate this up and then I will get back to you and we'll look at my dinner for tonight. Okay, so there is my quick and easy maybe took how long was that five minutes to whip this meal up the rice was 90 seconds um the rotisserie chicken was already cooked i just heated up the gravy and threw the chicken in it and those are the canned peas with a dab of butter but you know what i'm gonna do i'm going to try this rice i'm gonna try this rice in front of you because it was the microwave 90 second rice I've never had it before, so there's my meal. Let me just try this rice, and I'll tell you what I think about it. It really doesn't taste like much. It needs salt. It needs salt and pepper. Um, I got it at the Dollar Tree. It's not like Uncle Ben's or anything. I saw it. I said, you know what? That's quick. That's easy. It is the um, whole grain brown rice, which a lot of people don't like brown rice. I like brown rice. I think it's healthier, but it does not have much flavor. I don't think rice, in, rice period has flavor. So I will add a little salt and pepper to that, but the rest of it, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I will enjoy that. And I will enjoy the rest of the rotisserie chicken and the rest of the chicken in the gravy. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my story about what I was going to do on a whim. Probably the stupidest mistake, financial decision I could have made ever. Usually don't do stuff like that. We all have our moments, right? Yes, we do. No one's perfect. I want to show you something. I know I'm all over the place with this video, but I have to show you something. Hold on. So I was just looking over at the counter. My daughter, my daughter um, came down and bought a vehicle herself. Maybe that's why I thought I needed a car because my daughter bought a vehicle. She bought a new car. Um, and the dealership gave her this koozie for her water bottle, but it's not just a regular koozie. It's a hooded sweatshirt koozie. Do you see that? It's a hooded sweatshirt for her water bottle. It's got ties on the hood. See that? A tie. It's got a zipper. And the zipper. And the zipper that back up. And it's got a little pocket. Do you see this foolish thing? <laughs> Do you see this? I've never seen anything like this in my life. It's a hooded sweatshirt koozie for your water bottle. Yeah. All right, so you know what? I'm going to eat this. I'm going to shut the fan off because it's blowing my hair everywhere. The paper towels, they're making it look, it look like there's a ghost in the kitchen. Put my air conditioner on and enjoy my meal. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.